Welcome to episode 65 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folktales. My name is Mylan de Butterworth, and today we learn how Brynhild is tricked into marrying Gunnar, and the fate of all those who wore the cursed ring in part 4 of Sigurd the Dragon Slayer. In time, there Brynhild left her fire-girt castle and went unto the dwelling of Hamar, to whom she told how fate had served her. Fain was I, she said, that it had happened as a afore time that Sigurd had come through the flames towards me instead of Gunnar. As it hath chanced, said Hamar, so must it be. Now Brynhild had a daughter whose name was Eslog, a Volsung was she by birth, for her sire was Sigurd, and it was fated that she would be the last of her race. The battle maiden gave the child to Hamar so that she might be nourished and fostered and free from harm. When Brynhild did that, she went with King Budel, her father, to the hall of Gioki. There was a feast of splendor held, and Gunnar and the battle maiden were wed. They drank mead together and made merry. But if joy came to the heart of Brynhild, it speedily vanished when she beheld Sigurd with another bride. In secret, she bewailed her fate because that her first love, who had awakened her from magic sleep, had been taken from her by treachery and sorcery. Nor could such sorrow have long endurance. The treasure curse was upon them all. The shadow of doom was already darkening their days. Ere long, the pent-up grief storm broke forth in lamentation and feud. Ere long, there was shedding of blood and the heart call of vengeance. It chanced that Brynhild and Gudrun bathed together in the river, and the battle maiden perceived that Andvari's doom ring was worn by Sigurd's bride. They fell to quarreling one with another. Therefore, Brynhild went home pale was her face, and anger burned in her eyes. Her heart was in torment. On the morning that followed, Gudrun besought Brynhild to sorrow not. Thy heart is evil, the battle maiden said. It giveth thee joy to see me grieve, but thou shalt escape not thy due, for no longer can I endure to see thee with Sigurd. Thou hast Gunnar, my brother, said Gudrun. A worthier lord is he than thou dost deserve. Well mayest thou take joy in him. Happy would I indeed be with one more noble, Brynhild answered. Then Gudrun taunted her and told her how Sigurd had gone through the flames in the guise of Gunnar so that she might be beguiled. There was no joy in the heart of Brynhild thereafter. Her days and nights she sped in lamentation, so that she was heard by all. Nor would she speak unto anyone, not even her husband. For when she wailed not, she lay like to one who was dead. Alone in her chamber she lay. Her face was white as winter snow, and ice hard and cold. At length, Gunnar, besought Sigurd to go unto her, for to none had she spoken for many days, nor had she eaten or drunken aught. But Sigurd feared that he could quench not the flames of her grief, and knew well that she fostered ill against him with dire intent. Yet was he constrained to speak to her. So Sigurd entered her chamber. Arise, O Brynhild, he cried, for lo, the sun is bright. Grieve no more, and make merry in our midst. Brynhild opened her eyes, as aforetime she had done when Sigurd awakened her from magic sleep. So, she spake, thou art so bold as to come hither, thou who hast among all the others been more treacherous unto me. Speak not thus, said Sigurd, for what reason dost thou sorrow so deeply? 
because the sword is not red with thy heart's blood, Brynhild answered. Then was Sigurd moved to grieve also. To Brynhild he spake tenderly and low. Thee did I love better than mine own life, he said. But alas, I was given to drink of the meat of forgetfulness, so that a spell was cast over me, and I knew thee not. Yet did I sorrow when I came to know that thou, my heart's desire, wert wife to another. Now be my doom fulfilled, for I desire not to live any more. Too late, too late, cried Brynhild. It is too late to speak of thy sorrow. Now will greater scorn be turned against me than heretofore. Women shall mock, none shall pity me. Then Sigurd said he would put away Gudrun and name her for wife, but Brynhild would hearken not. All things have changed, said the woman of sorrow, and I would fain die. I have been deceived. I desire thee not, and I desire no other. So sore grief did Sigurd leave her. Her head was bowed, her eyes were dimmed, and never again was there joy in her heart. I would fain die, Brynhild wailed. I have been deceived. Sigurd hath deceived me, and death is his due. I will not have him live with her who taunts me with scorn. Even now he telleth her of what hath passed, and she mocketh me. When Gunnar entered Brynhild's chamber, she spake, Thou shalt live not another night if thou dost not slay Sigurd, nor aught else would she say unto him. That was indeed a grievous speech to the ears of Gunnar, to be asked to slay one with whom he had taken binding vows. Yet did he love Brynhild more than Sigurd. So he went unto his brother, Honia, and told him what had come to pass. If Sigurd is slain, Honia said, a noble warrior indeed shall be cut off, and doom and shame may be our dower. So together they went unto Gutorm, who was young and had not sworn oaths with Sigurd, and he consented to do the will of Brynhild. In the morning, Gutorum entered the bedchamber where Sigurd and Gudrun lay fast asleep. He drew his sword, and he thrust it through Sigurd's body, and gave him his death wound. Then he turned to make haste to escape. Sigurd woke in his agony, and seizing his sword, Gram, he flung it at Gutorum and slew him. Then Gudrun, who lay with her arms about her loved one, awoke to her sorrow. Her body was wet with the blood that streamed from Sigurd's death wound. Bitterly she moaned and wept. Grieve not too much, her husband sighed. As the Norns have decreed, so has it come to pass. My doom was hidden from me, and now it has now fallen. The hand of Brynhild is in this foul deed. She who loves me above all other men desireth that I should die. <sighs> Had I not been stricken while I slept, many great men would have fallen ere I could be overcome. Then Sigurd died. Even while he spake, he was taken from Gudrun. And she gave forth a loud and bitter cry that was heard throughout the hall. Brynhild laughed. Said Gunnar, Thou dost not laugh for joy, O monstrous woman, for thy cheeks have grown grim and death white. How wouldst thou feel now if thine own brother Attle was slain before thine eyes? <laughs> Vain is thy threat against Attle, Brynhild answered. There shall yet be much bloodshed, but thou thyself must fall ere he shall die. Gudrun cried, 
Sigurd is dead! My kinsman hath slain him! No other moan she made. Brynhild sighed in secret. One I have loved and no other, and he is laid in death. All through the moonless night that followed the death day, Gudrun sat beside her husband's body. Her tears were dried. Her cheeks were pale. She smote not her hands nor uttered any cry. Many sought to comfort her, but her heart was cold. At length her sister came and drew the white sheet from off Sigurd's body and said, Gudrun, turn thine eyes upon him thou lovest. Kiss his lips, take him in thine arms as if he were still alive. Gudrun looked in Sigurd's face. His eyes were glazed in death. His lips were cold, pale were his cheeks, and his hair was red with blood. She lay down beside Sigurd. She kissed his lips and wept. Then spake her sister, Never knew I of love like to the love that Gudrun beareth for Sigurd. Gudrun said, like to a sword lily among grass blades was Sigurd among the sons of Gioki, my brothers. I whom he raised up am now but a leaf cast to the winds. Never more by day or by night shall I hear his voice most sweet. Upon me have my brothers wrought this sorrow. My brothers have made me grieve with bitterness. Their oaths are broken, and they are brought to shame and their kingdom shall be laid waste. Never shall they have joy in the treasure which they desire. It shall be their bane, and drag them down to death. Brynhild came and saw Sigurd's body. She stood apart and spake not, but her eyes burned with grief fire. Then when she unto Gunnar, and cursed him, and all his kins, because that the vows of friendships were broken, and he and they had conspired against Sigurd and her heart's desire. Together we plighted our troth, she cried, and to the grave shall I follow him. Gunnar desired, <coughs> Gunnar desired not that Brynhild should die, but Honia said, she hath ever been a bane to us. Twere better that she died now. Yet ere Brynhild sought death, she caused to be slain Sigmund, the son of Gudrun. But Gudrun could find not greater deeps of sorrow than she had already reached. A great pyre was built, and on it were laid the bodies of Sigurd and his son, when it was set ablaze, Brynhild rode towards it upon her white steed and cried, Gudrun would have died with Sigurd had she a soul like to mine. Then she leapt amidst the flames and was burned with him she loved so well. So Brynhild passed from the world of men. So Brynhild passed from the world of men as she rode the darksome ways towards Hela, to search for Sigurd. And Hela Bridge, the giant maid who keeps watch, stood before her and said, Thou shalt pass not by this way, O gold-haired maiden. Thy hands are red with the blood of heroes. On Gioki Hall thou hast brought sorrow and scathe. Blame me not, Brynhild answered. My life was robbed of love. My vows were despised. My treachery was this evil done upon me, and I was mocked at and put to shame. Sigurd was betrayed, and I was betrayed by Sigurd, whom I love and now seek in death. The golden-haired Brynhild sang, swan-like and sweet, her death song on Hela's bridge. Ah, oh, but for battle never ending, are mortals made alive. Ah, oh, but to live or long to sorrow, to sorrow and to strive. Yet Sigurd and I shall live in Hela, as fain we'd live before. Our fame shall echo 
through the ages, ever and evermore. Spurring her white steed, she cried, Sink down, O giant maid, and rode on Hela's glittering plains. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.